Okay, so say for whatever reason you really want to rail fan in Canada. It's okay, I don't blame you, Canada's awesome, I'm literally moving there next year. But for this video's sake, say you really want to rail fan in Canada, but for whatever reason you can't. Could be because you don't have a passport, could be because the border's still closed to non-essential travel, your reason for not being able to leave the United States does not matter here. Basically, I'm here to tell you, you're in luck. Unless you wanted to railfan the CP, in which case, sorry, sucks to be you. But, if you want to railfan the Canadian National Railway, boy do I have the stretch of mainline track for you. Behold, the CN Sprague Subdivision. Now, you may be wondering, what is this? Well, the Sprague Subdivision is part of CN's major route between Winnipeg and Chicago. Basically, this line combined with the Fort Francis and Rainy subdivisions create a funnel for all CN traffic between Western Canada and the United States as a whole. And, yes, I know what you're thinking. It's busy. Oh, so very busy. The Sprague subdivision's western end is at Symington Yard in Winnipeg, the largest rail yard in Canada. Here it connects with the rest of CN's system, joining with their Transcon route. The Sprague sub moves southeast through Manitoba, but eventually it meets a geographical foe, Lake of the Woods. Now, I'm sure if CN could have it their way, the Sprague sub would stay on the Canadian side of the lake, connecting with the rainy sub in Fort Francis, Ontario. But instead, due to the loads of unnecessary work required to build that line around the north side of the lake, through the winding hills and thick forests of the Canadian Shield, they opted for the flat, open plains on the south side of the lake. The only issue is the south side of the lake is in the United States. So for about a 45 mile stretch from Warro to Baudette, this fully Canadian mainline, with Canadian crews, Canadian signals, Canadian signage, and Canadian customs cleared trains, runs straight through rural Minnesota. So to give you some examples of how stuff happens on this line, I need to give some context first. There are three subdivisions in play here. The Rainy Subdivision, which comes up from the south in Rainier, Minnesota, crosses the Rainy River into Fort Francis, Ontario. It continues for a bit into Fort Francis, where it connects with the Fort Francis subdivision at Duluth Junction. The Fort Francis sub keeps going northeast towards Thunder Bay, but let's ignore that for now. From here, the Fort Francis subdivision continues west for about 55 miles to Rainy River, Ontario, where it then becomes the Sprague subdivision, subsequently crosses the Rainy River again back into Minnesota, continues through Minnesota for 45 miles, and then crosses the border a third and final time back into Canada, just northwest of Warroad, Minnesota. From there, the Sprague subdivision keeps going northwest to Winnipeg and the eventual obscure western Canadian oblivion. It is very important to note that the customs enforcement of the trains for both countries is done on either side of the river in Rainier, Minnesota and Fort Francis, Ontario. American crews that were on northbound trains are taken off at the yard in Rainier. The train is inspected by U.S. Customs. Then a new crew takes the train across the border, going through a plethora of X-ray and infrared scanners, then stops at the Canadian Customs Yard for their inspection of the train. After this, the Canadian crew assigned to the train will take it the rest of the way to Winnipeg. This works both ways, and the whole process takes a few hours. When trains re-enter the United States and bought at Minnesota, they need to tell the U.S. Customs certain specific information. Here's an example. Hello, U.S. Customs, Bidet, CM 437, calling over. Customs, go ahead. Yeah, hello, Customs, 437, Robert Ewald, Ed Hammond, two locomotives pulled on the head end. No scheduled stops today. All right, clear to pull. Okay, clear to pull, thanks, uh, 437. After telling Customs what they're doing, they continue through this 45-mile stretch of Canadian railroading in the United States. Because these are Canadian crews, the signals and trackside signs are different from what you would normally see in the United States. There are even still searchlights here. These are just a few of the oddities and quirks that make this segment of track so interesting. There are a total of five sightings on the United States portion of the Sprague sub, two of them being 10,000 feet and three being less than 7,000 feet. The high concentration of sightings here is to minimize the time these Canadian trains are spent stopped in the United States. The sightings on this line from east to west are Baudette, Grayston, Williams, Blueberry, and Swift. After a westbound train has reached the third and final border crossing, they must slow down for Canadian Customs to do a roll-by inspection. After this, they continue into Canada. The same applies for eastbound trains leaving the United States crossing the Rainy River from Baudette into Ontario. 
Watch as we follow A437, a daily train between Niebing Yard in Thunder Bay, Ontario, and Symington Yard in Winnipeg, Manitoba, cross this amazingly odd 45-mile stretch of purely Canadian railroading, somehow completely inside of the United States. Customs, Bidet, CM-437, calling over. Go ahead. Yeah, hello, Customs, 437, Robert Ewald, Ed Hammond, two locomotives pulled on the head end. No scheduled stops today. All right, clear to pull.
be the dead end one in the middle. Dr. Brennan Austell on board and engineer Andre Fiola, no plan to stop to drop the U.S. over. Here, clear, Paul. Sorry, you broke up there, over. Clear to pull. Clear to pull, thanks. Have a good day,